All right, welcome back everybody. This is Chris Mackey and this is your fourth official tutorial on, on Honeybee Energy Simulation. And if you guys watched the last one, you'll know that we were using the, the, the zone labelers and the surface labelers to sort of get a sense of what was being assigned uh, to our zones. And we discovered that, that some of the surfaces were, were sun exposed when they, when they really should be interior. I mean, if we turn back on all of our, our, our preview here of all of all our zones, you'll see, yeah, that, that, that zone is like most of those surfaces are dead in the center of the building and yet they were sun exposed. And we're going to address that in this video where I'm going to show you a component that automatically solves the adjacencies of nearby zones and will change those, those, those walls to be not sun exposed and to be adjacent to the other surfaces. And you can imagine that's really important because you have heat flow through walls and you need to know what's adjacent to what. Um, so all right, so in this, in, so I'm going to actually, for now I'm going to actually delete these zone labelers because you guys kind of got the sense of how those things work in this one. And this series is all going to, sorry, this, this video is all going to be about this, this component, this honeybee solve adjacencies that's under the, 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 this first honeybee tab here. So if you guys drag and drop a solve adjacencies component onto the canvas. Um, and you know, and you'll see that this this input, so much like the surface and zone labelers, takes honeybee zones as an input. So we're just going to plug our our zones, our 15 zones for uh, for my parents' house here into here. And uh, and you know, and really all we need to do that is then and then just set a boolean to true for find adjacencies. And uh, I'm just going to do that right now. Take a boolean toggle, double click it to, to true, and and connect that up there. Um, and you'll see now again what we get out of this, you know, is similar to uh, to what we had in the first uh, in 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 this this mass to zones component. We get a list of B reps again, uh, you know, and again, I mean, it's 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 the ge you know we, it's geometry, but the properties that you guys have now gotten a sense of have changed behind the scene by passing it through this component. So that, that's a key thing to to understand in terms of the workflow of how to use use uh, honeybee for energy simulations that you kind of pass it through and you change the properties that are that exist there behind the scene so I mean so how can I check this well I can now plug in these honeybee zones with adjacencies and you guys you know were, were noticing maybe that uh, that looked like it was like a floor that was being assigned or, or you know a roof that was being assigned to these these uh, surfaces that were clearly on the interior and if we plug in these new zones now back to our, our separate zone based on type you guys should actually see that no longer will these interior sort of floors be be roofs that you won't you won't have exterior roofs there they won't come out in this output that is roofs there but they'll actually be ceilings or, or internal floors um, and let's see it's taking a little while because okay yeah and you see us see look the color had changed um, so now they're they're like a little bit reddish whoops uh, they're a little bit reddish uh, because they're now coming through the floors output here um, and you know and now for each of these components these adjacencies are solved so let's say I mean I guess I'm kind of regretting um, uh, taking away all those those zone uh, surface labors but I mean all right I'll just grab at you know one of the item selector components here and you know you'll see with the roof now um, and if we were to label the surface properties with with the same surface label that we had ah gosh I really shouldn't have uh, shouldn't have uh, erased that but um, but now if I like I were to label this zone with sun exposure you'll see that that the ones that are adjacent to other zones okay the ones that are adjacent to other zones oh, oh and again sorry we need to uh, grab the surface attribute list okay and we want to look at sun exposure you'll see that the ground there that was that that maybe had been well actually I guess the ground hadn't been sun exposed at first but now it's no sun or you know now you can see or, or maybe it's better to see maybe the attic really isn't the best place to see this maybe you see it on one of the lower floors uh, where you know you have walls that were adjacent to other ones so yeah this is the one that we were looking at before so now now it's labeled as no sun when it's touching another zone so that's that's the the beauty of this component is that I mean normally in Energy Plus you have to actually specify what's connected to what and all these different things, but this this component sort of solves that all for you and changes the constructions for you and and changes the the boundary conditions. All right, so now I can label this because we don't really need this anymore. Uh, but you guys can see that there are some other things that you can change here, like uh, like a, assign an alternate construction for those those zones that are adjacent to one another, and uh, and for example, let's say we wanted to uh, take two zones that were adjacent to each other and uh, and change the construction to an air wall that was in between them which is probably the case actually for a lot of the ground floor of my house 
um, because it's it's a pretty open plan on that ground floor. A lot of the the things flowing between each other. So let's let's I mean say if we wanted to oh. And I almost forgot to say, I, all right, so the actual item selector that, uh, that uh, Honeybee has is this, is this, it's the same thing as Android Humans, but it's this nice little pink one here that he made for us. And, uh, and I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the canvas so you guys see this. And actually, well, let's, well, let's just replace this old one so that we don't have to, so that those of you who don't have uh, uh, Android Humans uh, actual human toolbar, um, you can you can still open this file with just the honeybee components and I'll hook that up there and Andrew human if you ever watch this video I hope I hope you appreciated the the, ad, the advertisement to give you I would I would say anyone you should download human uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful set of grasshopper components um, but in any case all right so now that's that that we've got that addressed um, all right we'll just delete the old item selector that we used here and uh, and okay and now let's let's select out two item uh, two zones and let's use the the item selector uh, the honeybee item selector and let's select two ones that are adjacent to each other maybe on the first floor uh, so let's see all right I think that one looks like it's on the first floor and let's take another one uh, no that's not adjacent to it although actually that's all right oh oh that other one isn't on the first floor all right so we'll take that one. And let's see, one of these, one of these has got to be close. There we go. All right, two adjacent zones. And suppose we want to turn the, the, the sort of uh, boundary between specifically these two zones into an air wall. Uh, we can do that easily by, well, I'll first just set this to false so it doesn't recalculate everything. But we'll just connect up our two zones here. Um, and, uh, and then we can do very simply, uh, you know, just, just with a panel, just type air wall. Uh, well, actually, maybe we'll do it all caps. And you may be asking right now, well, Chris, how do I, how do you know that air wall is a construction, and that you know, if you could hook it up right to here as an alternate construction, that you know, that it would assign that. How do you know this air wall? And, and I will say, don't worry, guys. We're gonna have a bunch of videos on. There's a big library of constructions. Air wall is just one of the many things that you could change into this alternate construction uh, here. And I'll show you guys that later. But for now, know that you can just, yeah, you can just type in air wall here, and now you've created two zones with an air wall bound between them so let's say we wanted to do something like this for the for the entire first floor and, and set all the other ones to our typical default constructions well we can do that easily with a component that actually separates based on floor your honeybee zones and you actually you see we I'll take the opportunity here to say we have a few of these some of which can separate the zones based on orientation or by program um, or by perimeter core so there are a bunch of different ways of doing this and guys you should also take this opportunity to say that if there's ever anything that you want to do faster in in ladybug or honeybee there are chances are that there's probably a component that's that's whoa okay sorry my display was changing there but chances are that there's already a, a component in ladybug and honeybee to, to help you do that so just I mean don't be afraid to ask on the grasshopper forums or anything if there's a component that does it because chances are someone has asked already and there is one so alright so now we use this separate based on floor um, and instead of using these these ones to select out these single zones here I'm just gonna gonna delete that we'll connect all of our HB zones to this and you'll see out of one of them, well, we'll get uh, well, we get the floor heights out of one, and then we get the the honeybee zones classified into the three floors of my parents' house easily enough, um, into three branches. And the easy way to sort of take out these branches is if, is if you type bang, there's a an explode tree uh, component that native in Grasshopper. And you can see we have to right click on it and hit match inputs. But now out of each one of these ones, we get the different floors of B reps. And you can see this is the top one, it's the attic, that's the second floor, and that's the first floor. So so we'll just take the first floor ones here and uh, and maybe yeah, okay, we'll just take the first floor and connect them up to our, our honeybee zones with adjacencies that is uh, that is changing all the adjacencies in that first floor essentially to air walls. And I'll turn the preview off on this and the preview on on this. So you can see all these zones, all the adjacencies in this have been set to air wall. So it's like a totally open plan, essentially, the way that we're, we're, uh, we're, we're making it right now in, in my parents' house. So we can do that. And I mean, the rest of the floors in my parents' house, I mean, the, the bedrooms and everything on the top floor are, are uh, you know, they're, they're more the, the default constructions that, that we'd get set already. So we can actually use two honeybee components, so sorry, two honeybee solve adjacency components in tandem here um, to actually to set one that, that has the air walls on the ground floor and other constructions for the floors above that. So we'll just drag and drop another solve adjacencies component here 
and I'll hook up now. Now I'll hook up both the original honeybee zones that I have here, and I'll hook up those other two floors that we that we didn't have in the first one. Um, and importantly, now I have to set this this remember current adjacencies. I I have to set that to true. So I'll, I'll pull up a boolean toggle and set it to true. And so this way now, when I when I do this solve adjacencies, it will remember that I already set this to air walls, and it will just solve adjacencies on all the other surfaces and set the defaults because I, I haven't put in any alternate construction or alternate boundary condition. And so I'll set that to true. And now you can see the honeybee zones that come out of here are going to going to have that exact setup of an open uh, open ground floor, open plan with air walls in between everything, and uh, and and typical partitions between the zones in the, in the floors above. And so we get our 15 zones that you know that we can preview just as we had previewed before. Um, so you guys get a sense of that. You can use the same sort of workflow of, of you know, several solve adjacencies or two solve adjacencies components in tandem to change boundary conditions. So if you want to say like make certain walls adiabatic with one another, or or I mean, or I you know, all sorts of things that you could probably do with that. You can change that as well. And you, and the tolerance is obviously it's just you you know usually it's your Brino model tolerance, but that's essentially how close the zones have to be to each other to be considered adjacent. And usually you won't have to use that unless you're really debugging. But so, all right, so you guys get the sense of, uh, of, of what's, what's going on here. And maybe I'll just do one other thing because I showed you guys, I mean, before with the, uh, with the, the boundary condition of, um, of uh, let's see, of the, uh, with, with the labeling zones that you saw change from sun to no sun. So there's also another component that actually, de just like we have a decompose based on type like, like we have over here, there's a decompose based on boundary condition. And you can use this also to check uh, which, which things are, are of which type in your model. So if I hook up honeybee zones to this, you'll see out of each one of these, we'll get the surfaces that are all facing outdoors, those that are, um, you know, I mean, surface just refers to an interior surface. Whoops. Okay. Um, so, so we get interior surface things. Actually, wait, maybe, maybe it's better if I just, I'll turn the preview off on this and we'll pull up like a, a custom preview grasshopper component. And so you can see you hook up this, it gives you all the surfaces that are outside and that looks good for, you know, it's just the outside envelope. Um, it gives you all the inside surfaces if you hooked up that one. Um, so these are just the interior walls of, of, uh, of my parents' house. And then you get adiabatic conditions, which we didn't set anything adiabatic this time, so, so there's no need to worry about that. And then we get the ground, the ground condition here. And you also, I mean, underground stuff should also probably show up under that, that ground uh, partition there. Uh, or ground ground uh, set of uh, of surfaces. So all right, so you guys know you understand what the solve adjacencies is. That was the the point of this video is just to start, kind of show you what this component does, um, and that you don't necessarily you don't need to you know normally you would have to specify to any plus energy plus what is adjacent to what, but this will do this for you. Um, all right, guys, yeah, and so that's that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, and I'll see you in the next one.